When I turn on the news, well, when I turn on the news, the reporter is uh, often telling me, oh, the price of gas is going to go up. And sure enough, by the time the sports scores come on, price of gas has gone up. I always found myself thinking, how does that person know? Well, I found out they don't know. The person on the TV news isn't talking about the price of gas. That person is talking about the price of crude. One type of crude, usually light sweet, which is what most Americans use. And just one price, the highest futures contract for that particular day. Contrary to most people's understanding, the price of gas is not determined by the oil companies. Price of gas is composed of a lot of things. The price of crude, um, refining it, uh, transporting it, storing it, of course, marketing, markup, and taxes. A lot of guys in the supply chain, and they all want their cut. We live in a free market capitalist society. That's how we get goods to market. Now, the price of crude, unrefined gas, is determined roughly by supply and demand. Buyers and sellers get together and decide what they're going to do. They do this at a market. It's called NYMEX, and it's in New York. And um, a seller has two options. A seller can say, OK, I want to sell my market. I want to sell my uh, gas on the spot market. Make delivery today, get whatever the going rate is. But a seller can also sell on the futures market. They can make a contract with a buyer to deliver a set amount of crude on a, at a set price and delivered at a set date. That's a futures contract. Two things about futures contracts. Um, first, there's more of them. They cover more of, the, more of the crude that we ultimately use as gasoline in our cars. Why is that? Well, mainly because the crude that is in the ground that's easy to get out is gone. We've already pumped it out. We've already used it. The stuff that's in the ground now needs more investment, more equipment, more engineering, more manpower. Producers just want to get their money back. They're not going to do it for free, so they sell it at a guaranteed rate, making sure that they get their profit. The other thing about futures contracts is that <laughs> they've been going up a lot. And the reasons for that, mainly very high demand, very tight supply, an expectation that that's not going to change anytime soon, and a little speculation. High demand, I talked about that in the intro. China, China used to be a net exporter of crude. That has changed. It is just its economy is growing like crazy, and it needs every ounce of energy it can get. Um, China's electricity industry is a problem. There have been a lot of electricity shortages in the country, and people use diesel to get through the brownouts. Um, the other thing is that the communist Chinese government subsidizes the price of gas for its citizens, so they're not the most efficient users. Um, U.S. demand for energy goes up about 1% per year. Now, on the other hand, supplies are very tight. Production in Nigeria has gone down. Production in Iraq has gone down. Production in the United States went down last year after Hurricanes Rita and Katrina. And also, a lot of US wells are maturing. They're not producing as much. The reason for the uncertainty is because the market, and by the market, I mean folks like analysts, um, hedge fund managers, portfolio fund managers. They're looking at what's going to go on in the future of gasoline and crude prices. They don't see much. They don't see a lot of um, oil companies or governments getting ready to do something about supplies anytime soon. So they think the price of gas is going to stay high. Plus, you have the possibility of war. Uh, the market does not like wars um, because that means that probably production is going to go down even more. So, 
Futures contracts have gotten so high, in some cases they're higher than the spot market. That is really bad because that means producers don't even want it. They just want to hang back. They want to wait until the price gets even higher. The only good news about high prices is that it does eventually incent more supplies to come to the market. And you're already seeing that now. Now what I've been talking about is the price of crude. What we pay at the pump is actually gasoline. Crude that has been transported to a refinery, refined, transported to a wholesaler, stored, blended, and then put in the tank at the uh, gas station. Now, the price of gasoline is also determined by supply and demand. But there's a little bit more going on. You have a lot of government regulations. And those government regulations are intended to protect our air supply and our water supply. Uh, but they just tend to play havoc with prices. They tend to make us more vulnerable to localized shortages. I want to make a couple of additional comments about the uh, price of gas. Let's say the price of gas is really high, and you can get it out of the ground for really low. That gap, that difference is your profit. If the price of gas goes even higher, you make even more profit. And that's what happened with the major oil companies. They don't set the price of oil. But they can, get it, they can set the price of oil in terms of what they pay to get it out of the ground. So they make this huge profit, everybody goes crazy, Congress brings them in for hearings. And the executives of the major oil companies have to sit there and explain to members of Congress it's not illegal to make a profit. Oil companies certainly benefit from high oil prices, but so do you if you're a shareholder, and so does Congress because of the taxes. The market, I'll be the first to admit, the market, when you rely on the market to set prices, it can get pretty ugly. Um, $3.17 for a price of gas is very ugly. But what is your alternative? I mean, do you want the government setting prices? If you think the market is ugly, just wait till the government sets prices. That's what they did in communist regimes, and it didn't really work very well. And my last comment about gas prices is they have a tendency to rocket up and then gently float back down. The reason they rocket up is called its replacement costs. If you are, if you own a gas station and the price of gas, you've got to buy your next supply, and the price of gas goes up 15%, well, you have to pay 15% more to get your next supply. You need that 15% extra now. So it goes up. Why it comes back down so slowly, I don't really have a good explanation. The only reasonable explanation I've heard is a guy say, a guy from API, American Petroleum Institute, he said that when prices are going up, we tend to impose market discipline. We tend to be very aggressive about finding the best price. I think there's some truth to this because when gas prices are going up, I'll overhear people say, or people will say directly to me, hey, I got $2.99 on Fern Valley Road. And then somebody else will say, huh, I got $2.96 on Gray Lane. We get very anxious about the prices going up. Prices going down, we tend not to be as panicked. We don't tend to seek out the best cost. We don't impose market discipline. I guess that makes sense. It's just it's hard to drive around trying to find the best cost when the price goes up 35 cents in one hour.